guys, it's Stacey and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. Today we are going to be just going around my plants and giving you some little updates on how they're doing as well as talking about pests. I have had a pest outbreak. It was bound to happen. I've been too lucky this summer. Um, I've barely had any pests this summer, like at all. And I've been like, I've just had like no pests. So I'm just gonna be talking today about how I deal with the pest situation, what I do, how I manage it. I know that people do release beneficial mites into their collection, I've not done that. I just stick to the old methods of neem oil and etc etc. First though, I am just gonna go around and show you guys a little update of how my plants are doing uh, after I've been away for 10 days. Um, in case you're interested, if not, you can skip to the pest section of the video if that's what you're interested in. I will leave a timestamp for the pest management section and you can just skip to that. But if you are interested in how my plants are getting on and how they are doing, this is the last little bit of the growing season now. Yeah, after this, probably not going to have as much growth and stuff like that to show you. So yeah, let's get into the video. So starting in the main kind of room, um, this is like where I film mostly all of my Instagram videos. You can see here that this um, Alocasia Zebrina leaf is kind of spent. It's starting to go, you know, it's super floppy, like it's not holding its own weight. And it's going a little bit yellow. I have looked at it for pests because when it does this, I do think, hmm, is there a pest on it? But no, I can't see anything on it. I think maybe it did just put out this big leaf at the top here. So maybe it just, it was the time for that leaf to go. On the table here, I have my Alocasia Jacqueline that is actually putting out a new leaf, which I'm super excited about. That's the second leaf that it's put out in my care. Um, it put out this leaf for me before I went away and I've come back and it's putting out a new leaf which is amazing. I really, really love this plant. Um, I know it's kind of like an Instagram famous <laughs> plant at the moment. This is the latest leaf on my Syngonium Albo, which is kind of funky. Like, it's weird how the white side is like slightly more pointed than the green, but I thought that was kind of cool. My little mushroom propagations are doing well. They've got some roots on them. This is the Pothos Happy Leaf, which is doing better. If you can see there, it's growing a root. So if we go over to the shelf, there's not really a lot of updates on the shelf. Everything is fine, everything's happy. Same with these shelves down here. Everything is just kind of happy and healthy, which is what we want. This bottom shelf as well, when I came back, I thought, you know, a lot of plants would be quite dry, but all of these plants were quite moist. Like the soil was still moist. I don't know if it's because they're on like a bottom shelf that they're not getting the same temperatures. Maybe they're just not drying out as fast. We've got new growth on my variegated Maranta. And yeah, all doing very happy, very healthy. My string of hearts is looking a little bit crusty. I'm not really sure why. Um, some of the stems, maybe they're broken at the top, but I'm not really sure. But it is flowering in some places, so it can't be doing that bad. My umbrella tree is doing really well. Although this, see this uh, Zebrina? It just literally blocks out the light. It's burning itself because it's so bright, but it just wants to be there. <laughs> On my Monstera Deliciosa, we do have a yellow leaf. I'm hoping that is just like, again, a natural thing that's happening and it's not got any problems. I can't see any pests on it. And I have recently installed this grow light into my ceiling light, which is going to give the monstera a little bit more light hopefully but yeah i was quite sad to see that that leaf was going my monstera thai constellation um actually i came back and i found thrips on it so i have been treating it 
pretty much every like three, four days. I've not seen any more thrips on it since the first time that I saw them. Um, so hopefully I have managed to nip that in the bud pretty quickly. Because I would be very, very sad if this plant was to die. <laughs> I love this plant so much. But good news, it's also putting out a new leaf, which you can see there. So I'm excited for that. Um, I'm just kind of having it hanging around on the table here. Yes, it's in the way, but this plant is kind of important to me. So I would rather just have it in the way and being able to check on it daily. So same thing for this uh, Philodendron Gloriosum. Again, it had thrips on it when I came back, which is so weird because I have no thrips at all in my house. So I'm not really sure where they've come from. But yeah, this also had some thrips on it. I'm again treating it. This plant and this plant were sat next to each other. So I'm thinking, I don't know. I honestly don't know where they've come from. Um, they could literally come from anywhere. They can come from outside. They can come from produce. They can come from anywhere. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of sad about that too, but there's no actual damage on the plants, which is a good thing. It was only a few thrips. It wasn't like a bad infestation, but still, I'm hoping to get rid of those very quickly. I also just wanted to show this plant, which is my Boston fern. It's doing so well. Um, I kind of thought this one might die when I left it for 10 days, but I came back and it was perfectly fine. Um, this plant needs quite a bit of water, that's why I thought it wouldn't survive. But it's doing so well. This is the best I've ever done with a fern, so I'm kind of proud of myself for this one. <laughs> But yeah, I do love, I love the look of ferns because they give like the jungle vibes, but I just never really have very good luck with them. So I'm so happy that this Boston fern is living its best life. I'd recommend if you do go away and you leave a fern, just to pull it back from the window, just to make sure it doesn't dry out as quickly. I also thought my begonia double dot was worth a little mention here, just because it's flowering and it has the most sweetest little blooms. They are so cute and adorable. But yeah, if you're looking for a kind of a smaller compact begonia that's similar to the maculata, um, this one is more compact, the double dot. I think it's probably very, very closely related to the maculata because it looks so similar. Um, but it's just so beautiful and it's just gorgeous. I love the, um, I love the spots. Okay, on my windowsill, I actually do have a few new leaves coming on my Alocasia dragon scale. This is the newest leaf and oh my gosh, it is beautiful. I am in love with that leaf. <laughs> A little update on these Tenanthes that I was treating in my recent plant chores video. They are doing much better. I know you can see a lot of damage on the leaves, um, but trust me, they are doing better than they were. The spider mite issue has been almost resolved because of the treatments that I've been doing. The damage is most likely from the neem oil treatments that I've been doing on it, as well as the spider mites. Um, However, leaves grow back, so I'm not too bothered about that. I'm just mainly concerned whether or not there is spider mites on it. I'm still going to treat them, even though I can't see any spider mites left on the plant. And then this one, again, it is looking a lot better. And I can't see any spider mites on this one either. I think I may have resolve the situation. So this is what we are dealing with in this room. We have my begonia tamia, which is flowering. I love the blooms on these, they are so, so cute. My alocasia cupria has lost a leaf. I think this is due to um, just me not watering it correctly. It was very dry when I got back. Um, I've since watered it um, and it seems to have perked up quite a lot. Um, but yeah, I think the leaf, that leaf gave up on life because of, I wasn't here to water it. I missed a watering. 
on this shelf everything is looking okay it's looking good this prince of orange is actually looking so nice so pretty i really like this plant um this is obviously such a little baby the orange leaf to green is quite unique and i really do like the look of it i feel like it gives a really nice color a pop of color my philodendron bilite just put out this leaf it's starting to harden off now um but this is its newest leaf so that one's happy i've had a couple of yellow leaves on this philodendron birkin which i'm a little bit concerned about because this plant does not give yellow leaves like this plant hardly ever has yellow leaves so i'm a little bit concerned about that i'm not sure if i've actually over watered it because i rarely rarely water it it's hard to see but it's in quite a decent ish size pot so i barely barely water it and before i went on holiday i decided i'm just going to water it um because i was going away and i don't think i should have done that i think i should have just let it dry out they don't mind being dry it's a philodendron so yeah um i was a little bit sad to see that it had a few yellow leaves on it but it will be fine i'm just i'm just a little bit concerned that see like this is all of the birkin implant. it's quite big this syngonium albo has put out a couple of new leaves but they are not great for the variegation i'm not sure if that's because it's not getting the best light well you know what it's getting pretty good light though it is getting good light but it seems to be reverting back to green which is kind of sad it has like a tiny bit of variegation but like the smallest amounts of variegation which is yeah i'm pretty sure it's reverting so i might chop it back to where the variegated section was and see if it puts out some more variegated leaves over here i have my different back ear reflector which is doing really really well um i find with these if you want it to give those really nice beautiful markings you have to give it less light the more light you give it the less that it will give you these so this one is always getting just a bit of a shadowy kind of darker light i think this leaf is gonna go soon also this is zappa in his little armchair he's napping oh also this alocasia i think i showed this well yes i did show this in my houseplant tour and it only has one leaf <laughs> but good news it's putting out a new leaf so we will soon have two leaves yay <laughs> it's not much to ask right but it is an alocasia so they do like to be a little bit rebellious so this jade plant has mealybugs i've just been looking at it before and going at it with a q-tip and just squishing some of them um but yeah this has mealybugs i really don't know how it has mealybugs because i've had this plant probably this is like one of my oldest plants so for it to get mealybugs is quite depressing and confusing it has been near these plants up here so i have a string of dolphins and i have like a black pagoda lipstick plant which is actually in the bath right now i've just sprayed it with water so yeah i'm unsure where those have come from also this string of pearls i saw i saw a mealybug on this this one's relatively new so i'm thinking is that the culprit is that the one that has given all of these plants mealybugs i think it might be which is so sad so yeah that is all the plant updates now let's go over to the pest part of the video so i've had a couple of people message me and comment asking me what the ingredients are or what are the measurements for making the neem oil solution so first thing you're going to need is a spray bottle please don't use a good spray bottle that you like to use for anything else have one that is just for neem oil that's what i do i have this one which is old and gross um and that is my neem oil bottle also don't get them mixed up <laughs> because once the neem oil goes into this spray bottle it's going to be ruined it's just going to be neem oil bottle for the rest of its life so you need a spray bottle 
You also need some dish soap. This is just plain fairy. Actually, it's apple flavor, but it really doesn't matter. I know people say don't use flavored ones. Flavor? I don't know why I call it flavor. I do this with everything. I call everything a flavor. Scent. <laughs> don't use different scents. Um, but I just use whatever dish soap washing up liquid that I have and I've never had a problem with that I know some people say don't do that, but I've never personally had a problem with it So yeah, just fairy liquid what you use to wash your dishes with that stuff Whatever you call it. That's the stuff that you need. You just need a tiny tiny bit of this So that's why I think is it really a problem that it's scented? Um, and also you're gonna need some neem oil. Please don't judge me for how this looks. This is really old. These last ages. So if you're thinking, do I want to pay for a bottle of neem oil? Just do it because they last a really long time. I've had this for a couple of years, um, hence why it looks like this. This is a organic neem oil. I think I just got this off Amazon or something. I can't remember where I got it from. Um, but yeah, any just plain organic neem oil will do. So yeah, I'm just going to show you now how I mix all of these things together. I don't have a strict measurement situation. I just kind of wing it. Um, you just kind of get used to mixing it once you do it a few times and you'll just kind of, you'll just kind of know how to do it. So you want to take your spray bottle. Again, don't judge me for how gross this is. This is just what neem oil does. It kind of like congeals and goes weird. Okay, so you want to take your fairy liquid. We're just going to start with this. Sorry if the lighting is a little bit bad. So you're just literally going to take that much. A little squirt. That's all you need. This is just there so that the oil and the water mix together. Okay, and then you're going to take your neem oil. I'm just going to pour... <laughs> about that in which I would say would be about like two teaspoons now I'm just going to fill the rest up and try not to spill make sure you don't fill it right to the top make sure you leave a little bit of room because when you start mixing it the bubbles will take up the rest of that space so to make sure you fill it you leave a little bit of a gap and you can see already that the, the neem oil is separating from the water. That is because it is an oil and oil and water do not mix. So screw that lid back on. Give it a really good shake. And as you can see, it's now mixed. Now, every time that you go and use this, you are going to have to reshake it again and make sure that it's mixed. That is how I do my neem oil mixture. Now let's go and spray some plants. <laughs> so like I said, I have this um, black pagoda lipstick plant and it has mealybugs on it. So I'm going to spray it with that neem oil solution that I just made. So yeah, now that plant is completely sprayed down, what you do is you wait for it to dry, wait for it to drip dry off Put it back in a location where it's not near any other plants and repeat the process every five days. I know it's a horrible process, <laughs> but trust me, it does work. You just have to be, you just have to keep doing it. The main thing with pest management is repetition and just doing it over and over and over again. So you're making the environment basically extremely uncomfortable for the pest to live um, and you're breaking the life cycle of the pest. That is the main thing that you need to do is to break the life cycle of the pest. I do find every five days, five to seven days is a good, is a good like manageable time frame to do it. If you just keep, keep going with this treatment, I promise you that it does work. Also, it is important. I didn't show this part, but I'm going to show you it with another plant now to also spray the plant down that gets any insects on the plant off the plant that are just kind of hanging around and they go down the drain. <laughs> it's also really important that you check your plants regularly for pests. I am checking mine pretty much every day. I'm going around and I'm looking. Whenever I'm looking at my plants, I'm looking for pests as well. This is just a really, really good thing to practice when you own plants because it gives you the ability to be able to catch a pest early 
and when you catch them early you have a much better chance there's less pests on the plant less numbers is easier to deal with when it's like gets to a certain point it's really really hard to tackle them if there is so so many of them so yeah checking your plants regularly is really important with pest management and pest control even now i'm just sat i'm looking at this syngodium I sat here and i'm like you got anything on you you got anything you got some pests <laughs> so yeah we are now going to treat another plant i'm gonna do the jade plant i think because it needs it so let's do that you're coming with me honey oh this one is so sad, honestly, that it has pests. I'm gonna try not to let it touch any other plants too. Okay, she's in the bath. Now let's just spray her down with a strong stream of water. And now we're going to spray it with the neem oil. As you can see, the neem oil is sitting on top of that water, so just make sure you shake it. <laughs> make sure you give it a good shake before you use it every time. how I deal with the pest situation. I do these neem oil rinses, like I said, every five days when I have a pest situation and it does help. You just have to, you just have to do it over and over again until you don't see any more pests on the plant. I will resort to a pesticide if I have to, but this, that will literally be like the last resort <laughs> for me. I feel like pests, it just always happens when we transition from summer to autumn, they just come out in full force. So just know that you're not alone. A lot of people out there that own plants will be going through the same as you right now. And if you've not tried neem oil, give it a go, see if it works for you. Just know that it does stink because it does smell quite bad. <laughs> but what can you do? Like, you just have to, you just have to deal with it. And I hope that if you are dealing with pests right now, I wish you all the luck and I hope your plants get through it. Um, and yeah, I hope this video helped anyone out there and um, I hope you enjoyed looking at my plants and seeing some updates on them. Um, I really enjoy filming these videos for you guys and talking about plants. So let me know in the comments uh, what you thought. And if you have any tips for mealybugs in particular, let me know in the comments. I cannot get rubbing alcohol and stuff like that in the UK. I think I would have to order it online like special and it's really expensive. So not that suggestion, please. But if you have any other suggestions for mealybugs, please, please, please let me know because they are the main pest for me that I really struggle with and I hate them because they are ugly. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe i upload videos every friday so <laughs> if you'd like to see more videos from me make sure you press subscribe hit the bell to be notified when i next upload i will see you guys in my next video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys soon bye